Hi, this is Roger Cabe with the Southwestern Medical Clinic Foundation. Today with us in our digital studios, we have Dr. Heather Martin. Dr. Martin is serving as a missionary in Zambia, and today she'll be sharing with us Helping Babies Breathe, a program that she's working on with the community there in Zambia. Now, recognize that we're doing this interview long distance over the internet. So if things pause or things drag just a little bit, please be patient with us. Thank you so much for joining us and welcome Dr. Martin. Ah, thank you for uh, letting me share. I am just really excited to have the opportunity to share with you all um, one of the projects that I want to be involved with in my year um, in Zambia. Uh, this program is called Helping Babies Breathe, as you can see, and I'll be working through our community health evangelism of Zambia. This is a great network of community health workers that we have on the ground already in place. And I'll start a little bit with the reason of why I want to introduce this program to them. So the problem is that there are uh, 3 million newborn deaths in the first month of life every year in the world. Uh, and half of those deaths occur during delivery or within the uh, next 24 hours um, because of inadequate breathing. So 90% of births go without a problem. 10% of births have a problem. Nine of those 10 just need a little stimulation or a puff of air from a big mass ventilation uh, to begin breathing and then they, can, they will live and be fine. 1% need the extended amount of uh, CPR and intubation and that. The problem is that 9 of those 10, when they come out, they aren't breathing, they look blue, they aren't crying, and if people are not aware, they don't give any help and the child will die needlessly. So one of the uh, millennial development goals, uh, goal number four, is to reduce by two-thirds the under five mortality rate. And this first 24 hours of life is a key part of reducing the infant mortality rate. So what is the answer to this problem? One of the main answers, I think, is this Helping Babies Breathe program. It's a global public and private alliance. It is a, basically a neonatal resuscitation course for resource limited areas. It's a collaboration of the American Academy of Pediatrics and USAID and a number of other um, organizations. They've all collaborated together to make this course available and affordable to resource poor countries. A little bit about what the program is. As you can see, they have a baby model, They're very similar to your CPR classes with your Annie. This is called Neonatalie. And it's filled with water, so it acts like a baby. A uh, chart and a very clear logarithm to take learners through what do you do in that first golden minute of life. It's nice because it can be done in, in a hospital, it can be done in a clinic, it can be done in a home birth setting. It's supposed to complement some of the midwifery classes um, and traditional birth attendants um, in these countries already. Another goal of it is to bring communities together to discuss how their community as a whole can be healthier for newborns. So does it actually work and make a difference? There has already been a number of studies done uh, in, in Africa and in India showing the help of this program already. I'll show you just two different studies. One in Tanzania, they did a large training in the major hospitals and uh, major clinics in the country. And there was an almost 50% reduction in early neonatal mortality, that is in the first 24 hours of life, after they did the Helping Babies Breathe training intervention. In Zambia, there was a program done that had a control group and a, a trained group. 
that learned the version of helping babies breathe and infant drying and early sepsis intervention being taught in a, a rural setting to traditional birth attendants. These were almost all home deliveries. And there was a 70% decrease in neonatal deaths due to asphyxiation in the trained persons versus the control. Just quite an uh, impressive decrease in the amount of deaths. So what is my plan? What do I want to do here in Zambia? I want to train 50 community health evangelism workers in 10 different communities across Zambia. And then as, along with that, as I do that, I will find and train a national community health volunteer to coordinate yearly refresher courses and new workers as they um, come and want to be trained. I definitely want to encourage the discussion and networking for the newborn health in these communities and then connect with other clinics and hospitals interested in the training program also. And then connect to the Ministry of Health and other programs that are already in place in Zambia to really make this a coordinated effort to have lasting impact after I'm gone that it can be fully sustainable on its own. So what is the things that I am going to need? Uh, it's going to cost about $16,000 initially. Um, to implement the program as I see the neonatal training kits and the, I want to have a bag and mask and suction bulb for each of the participants that finishes the course. And then this includes the training books, the flip charts, the posters for the learning and then the tests that they take at the end and the certificates for passing. And then also it this takes into account the travel to the communities and the meals for the participants as we do the training. And what is the reward? The reward is this is a, a, a picture of a child that I helped resuscitate in the hospital here about two years ago using um, just a bag and mask and a suction. And I'm excited that um, to be able to share with these people some of the proper techniques that will help save these children's lives. And as these lay people um, go and teach their neighbors, they bring gospel messages along with them. They pray with the patients, with their clients, before and after, and uh, it's a really nice hand-in-hand -hand working together of health care messages along with healthy living and preventative care and uh, spiritual learning. There is a lot of angst surrounding birth, or pregnancy, birth, and delivery, as you can imagine, with the high mortality. Um, so it's a great opportunity to bring uh, the message of the gospel into a family when they are at a point of need and may be more willing to listen. As I talked about this program as an introduction at our CHE convention, I, the women and a few men that came to the class were very excited at the concept. They see a very great need in their community and how they can use this to reach out to their neighbors. Uh, every woman there had been to a difficult delivery, either her own or a neighbor or a family member. So they have all seen children up close and personal die um, in that beginning time of life. So they are very ready to gain the knowledge and the skills to help the newborns in their community. As we look at you know, millennial development goals and public health, sometimes we look at all the numbers, say, oh yes, it's good to want to reduce the numbers and, and have our numbers look better on our spreadsheet. But the reason behind that is because each, each number is a face and a story and there are uh, many tears that we can uh, prevent and uh, many lives that we can see um, saved and go forward and uh, live full productive lives in these countries. I really appreciate your generosity in supporting me in this project and the women and children of Zambia, thank you also. Thank you, Dr. Martin, for joining us from Zambia and sharing with us your needs in that community. If you as a listener would like to give to this project, we encourage you to give generously and to make your checks out to the Southwestern Medical Clinic Foundation, 2550 Meadowbrook Road, 
Benton Harbor, Michigan 49022. Or you can go online at our website at swmcf.org and you can give online. All donations given will be used to support the educational efforts in Zambia and programs like these throughout the world. Thank you so much for joining us and we hope to have you with us again in the near future. God bless.